morning once again everybody we're going to raise a hallelujah we're going to sing our praises to the king of kings the one who is going to come back triumphantly and in the meantime we wait patiently expectantly fill us with hope jesus and you deserve our praise so help us to sing out amen
give it to you. Amen. Good morning and welcome. We're so glad that you've joined us for this day of worship. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Today we observe the last Sunday in the church year, sometimes called Christ the King Sunday, also Sunday of the Fulfillment. We remember that our Lord is coming again in glory and power to welcome his bride home to be with him forever into eternity. Then and now, through this earthly life and for all eternity, we are assured that by God's grace, we are safe in the arms of Jesus for all eternity. May God bless our worship to his glory and our good. Let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We speak responsibly the beginning portion of Psalm 95. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God. And a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it. And his hands formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of these least of my brothers, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison, and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them, saying, Truly I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, 
but the righteous to eternal life. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. <laughs> Ezekiel. Ezekiel, look at mommy. I'm going to tell you a story about goats and sheep, okay? You like goats and sheep? Okay, so can you tell me what's similar about goats and sheep? You don't know? I know. I know. Are they both furry and fuzzy and fluffy? Do they both eat grass? Do What do they drink? I guess like um, water and milk too. Like you. And so, yeah. So like, <laughs> We're going to eat chipotle today. Do goats and sheep eat chipotle? No. No, they only eat grass. So one time... There were some goats and some sheep that lived next to each other in a field. And in the same field, there were other animals. And those animals couldn't find any grass to eat and they couldn't find any water to drink. And the goats, they saw those other animals and they didn't help them. They were too busy eating their own grass, drinking their own water, and just playing. So the goats didn't help them at all. But the sheep, the sheep took the time and the sheep helped the other animals. They showed him where all the super nummy grass was. They led them to the best water to drink and they helped them and played with them. And so then one day, the king of the goats and the sheep were coming to visit and everybody was really excited because it was the king, right? Would you get excited if the king was coming? And so then, the king got there and the king immediately sent all the goats away. But the sheep got to stay and play with the king. And this is kind of a story like what Jesus did one time. One time Jesus came and everybody was excited to see him, but he sent a group of people away and he kept some other people. And the people that he kept were like, Jesus, why are we still here? And Jesus said, because when I was hungry, you fed me, and when I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. And they said, when did this happen? I don't remember giving you food or drink. And Jesus said, because you helped others, you helped me. So that means that to Jesus, if you help somebody else, it's just like you're helping Jesus, and Jesus likes that. So how can we help other people? What can we do to help other people? Uh, somebody ran out of water. Who, who can help him? Me. I have a water squirter. You have a water squirter. That's right. You can help him. And if somebody is hungry and you have lunch, could you maybe share your lunch with them? Yeah, yeah that'd be nice, wouldn't it? And you'd be helping. Should we say a prayer? Come here. Let's sit up and say a prayer. Sit up and fold your hands with me, okay? I just want my hands like this. Like this. Okay, ready? Father, we are so grateful for the Bible that teaches us to love others and be kind. Please help us to have generous hearts so that we can recognize when somebody else needs our help and let us help them. Thank you, Lion, for looking, let me look at you awake. In Jesus' name, amen. We confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
Well, we know in the Word of God, it says that uh, Jesus is relentless. He is pursuing us. Uh, he is a, uh, a king, but also a papa. He, he wants to come and uh, take care of us. He wants us to run into his arms. He's searching after us with a big spotlight, a big searchlight. He'll never, ever, ever stop trying to bring us back to the fold. He is that good. So help us, Lord Jesus, to respond to you, to willingly surrender to you, and uh, thank you for loving us with that fierce kind of love. Amen. Before I call, before I ever cry, you answer me from where the thunder hides. I cannot run this heart I'm tethered to. Every step I collide with you Like a tidal wave Crashing over me Rushing into me near Colorless fears Like a hurricane That I can't escape Tipping through the atmosphere The Old Testament reading is from Ezekiel chapter 34. For thus says, says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so I will seek out my sheep and I will rescue them from all the places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the ravines and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture and on mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land and on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. 
I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, Behold, I, I myself, will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you push with side and shoulder and thrust all the weak with your horns till you have scattered them abroad, I will rescue my flock. They shall no longer be prey. And I will judge between sheep and sheep. And I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I am the Lord, I have spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dearly loved and precious children of God, brothers and sisters in Christ, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, today we come to the end of the church year and we observe and celebrate the last Sunday of the church year. It goes by a number of names. Sometimes it's called Christ the King Sunday and sometimes it's called the Sunday of the Fulfillment. Our hearts and our minds are drawn to the end of the world, the end of time, the return of Christ, the final judgment, and the great victory blast of the trumpet, summoning the people of God to worship the Lamb on his throne and enjoy the presence of his glory in peace and joy for all eternity. Whatever we choose to call this particular Sunday, it brings the current church year to a close. Some of us are more than ready for that this year. 2020, in particular, was one of those long, long years. Time sort of seemed to come to a stop in March. And it seems like we've been stuck in March all the rest of this year. Many people would say that the signs of this year are actually signs of the end. People have used apocalyptic language and end times terminology to describe the events and the life in the year 2020. They point to the pandemic, of course, and all that goes with that, but they also point out the earthquakes, the fires, the tropical storms, and all of the other catastrophic events that have already taken place this year. Christians focus on the end, the end times at the end of the church year. However, there is a danger in becoming too focused only on one element of the end, to become fixated, if you will, on the doom and the gloom of the final judgment. Clearly, both the Old and the New Testament speak of the end of all things, the end of time and the end of the world and the return of Christ and a final judgment of all souls. Jesus himself spoke of this. Our readings for today are just a few examples of what the scriptures teach about the end. But it is not all gloom and doom. On this last Sunday in the church year, as 2020 begins to draw to a close, we hear the words of the prophet Ezekiel, words of comfort and hope, words of promise and strength, 
Yes, our Lord is returning in glory. Yes, there will be an end. Yes, there will be a judgment. But by God's grace, by his call and blessing, by his power and promise, we are assured that we are safe in the arms of Jesus for all eternity. Today, as we look at the words of the prophet Ezekiel and what he recorded the Lord as having promised, we see one of the most familiar and precious images in all of the Bible, that of a shepherd. The image of a shepherd describing God's care for his people, wrapping us in his arms, providing for all of our needs of body and soul, protecting us from harm and danger, feeding us when hungry, binding us up when hurt, carrying us when too weak to walk ourselves. The scriptures speak of this image throughout the Old and the New Testament. The best loved of all of the Psalms, Psalm 23 begins, the Lord is my shepherd. Psalm 80 begins, give ear, O shepherd of Israel. Isaiah 40 describes God tending his flock like a shepherd, gathering the lambs in his arms and carrying them in his bosom. And of course, this is the very title Jesus took for himself when he declared, I am the good shepherd. Now listen again to how the Lord describes the things he will do for his people, the precious lambs of his flock. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself, will search for my sheep and seek them out. I will rescue them. I will bring them out and gather them and will bring them into their own land. I will feed them with good pasture. They shall lie down in good grazing land. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. This image is a far cry from the fire and brimstone tactic of some modern prophets to try to scare people into obedience to the law of God by images of doom and gloom. The message of the law of God shows our sin and how we fall short and exposes how truly unable we are to keep God's law and to justify ourselves before him by our good works. But the gospel shows our Savior the gospel proclaims that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, searching after the lost, seeking the straying, gathering us up, binding us to himself, proclaiming his eternal love for us in Christ Jesus. The gospel proclaims, even as we await for the return of Jesus in the end of time, the gospel proclaims that we are safe in the arms of Jesus now and for all eternity. Jesus picks up on that image used by David and Isaiah and Ezekiel in our text for today to describe himself as the good shepherd in John 10 to describe the things he does for us and all his precious lambs. Jesus declared, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. And I lay down my life for the sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, 
and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hands. The Good Shepherd calls, gathers, enlightens, protects, feeds, nurtures, and cares for his precious little lambs. He guides us and empowers us and protects us and strengthens us through his word and sacraments. The Good Shepherd takes care of all of his sheep, providing all that we need in body and soul to endure through the trials of this earthly life until we join him in the joys of eternity. We are safe in the arms of Jesus for all eternity. In confident faith, we trust in our Good Shepherd. We hear his word. We cling to his promises. We draw close to him in every time of need, knowing that he pulls us to himself, holds us in his embrace, keeping us safe in the arms of Jesus for all eternity. We need not fear the end of the year. We need not fear the end of our lives. We need not fear the end of time nor of this world, for we are safe in the arms of Jesus now and for all eternity. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds through faith in Christ Jesus to life eternal. Amen. In response to today's message, let's give our tithes and offerings and our whole lives back to him, the good, the great, the gracious, the glorious King, Jesus. Help us to run into your arms, our great God. You are good, you are good, and there's nothing good in me. You are love, you are love, on display for all to see. You are light, you are light, when the darkness closes in. You are hope, you are hope, you have covered all my sin. Are true, even in my wandering, you are joy.
Jesus, Jesus, my heart will sing no other name. Jesus, Jesus, let him know my heart will sing no other name. Jesus, Jesus. Help that to be our prayer and help it to come true, that we would truly put you first. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, according to your promise, we wait in eager anticipation for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the King of kings and Lord of lords, and who will raise us up in glory to live in the fullness of your eternal kingdom. Be with us and bless us as we wait in faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Savior Jesus, like a shepherd, lead us through this earthly life. You are our good shepherd. You lay down your life for us, and you raise us by grace to the newness of life in you. We pray that you will keep us strong in faith and bold in witness until your return in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all grace, we thank you for the unity of faith we enjoy as we worship you. Waken our hearts so that we may never forget your blessings, but always thank and praise you for your goodness and mercy to us. Bless our Thanksgiving celebrations with your presence and peace, and grant us the assurance that with you beside us, we are never alone in this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that you keep our cities, our nation, and our world in peace and safety as we continue to battle the COVID-19 pandemic. Give wisdom to those who serve and support us and protect our healthcare workers and all essential workers so that the needs of people may be met and that together by your grace, we can endure the trials and tribulations we face. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are recovering in health, including Arnold Brillinger, Charlotte Calliott, Chris Castle, Martine Grunow and her sister Ginny, Ralph Lebrenz, Greg Lowry, Dave Nivu. Tom Poole, and David Schaff. Lead them safely through their process of healing to full recovery according to your good and gracious will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his will, 
working in us that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, let's celebrate one more time through music as we sing our closing song. My friends, may you grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior. My friends, may you grow in grace and in Thank you. Amen.